Hey, what is going on guys? This is Jason with Jadron Aquatics. Thanks for hanging out with me again. Hope you guys are doing great out there. I know these are some rough times. Uh, I apologize, haven't put out a video in a few weeks. I think I'm finally starting to get back into the swing of things a little bit. Uh, depression was really starting to kick my butt. I just, I couldn't get motivated to just hardly do anything. Uh, but I'm, I'm ready to get going again. And so what I decided I would do is I want to do a uh, multiple videos on um, on a fish room, on the cost of it, uh, what it takes to get it set up, um, the different types of ways to uh, plumb it, different ways to get air to it, just from start to finish. Just do multiple videos to show you guys um, exactly how um, I've done it. And this can be just for a fish room that has even three uh, fish tanks. It doesn't have to be a massive one because I'll break it down so you guys can see um, how to do it on a small scale or how to do it on a massive scale. So let's go ahead and this episode we're going to talk about the cost of setting up a fish room and running a fish room. So let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, so let's talk about the first thing, uh, tanks. And so we, we all know that when uh, Petco runs its sales, you can get most tanks for a dollar a gallon. So we've got your uh, 10 gallon tanks here that you can get uh, for $10. And then we've got some uh, 20 gallon highs down here that are $20. Uh, my favorite tanks uh, are the uh, 40 gallon breeders. Uh, these are a little bit more. I think these are about 50 or 59 uh, when they have that special. So uh, you can see the cost of, of those. And I know a lot of times when you go into Petco and you see that they have their special going, you think, man, I'm gonna get this another, another 10 gallon tank and get it set up and it's only gonna cost me $10. But that tank is gonna cost you a lot more than just $10 because of everything that it takes to get that tank up and going, uh, not including the fish that you're going to end up putting in it. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's talk about some of the things that you're going to have to uh, get in that tank. So the first thing you're gonna to want to do um, and the way that I've done it, we, uh, you can do hang on back filters, but we're gonna try to think of the most cost effective way of doing things. And the most cost effective way if you're gonna run multiple tanks is to run sponge filters. And so in every single one of my tanks, I have these Hydro 5 uh, sponge filters. Uh, in the 40 gallon ones, I have two. And in the 10s and 20s, I only have one. Now I buy these from uh, Jimco and I buy them in bulk. So I get them for about $7 a piece. I think they're probably about 10 if you only buy uh, one or two at a time. Uh, now remember, you've got to have the airline that goes to it. So whenever I get airline, I actually buy it on a, a spool. I'll show you guys right here. This is a spool that I buy it on. I think this is about uh, 100 feet or 200 feet. I, I can't remember. It's in. It's done in meters. It's 100 meters. And this roll right here, this cost about 25 or 30 dollars. So that goes a that goes a long way. So that doesn't really affect the cost per tank too much. If you guys are enjoying this video and you would love to see more fish room tours, more fish store tours, and a bunch of cool DIY projects in my amazing fish room, be sure and hit that subscribe button right now. And then the next thing that you're gonna need, um, or I would suggest that you need, is to get some air stones. My favorite air stones, I've used a lot of different types, a lot of them clog, are the ceramic type. Uh, those are ones that I also get from Jimco. Uh, those guys are about a little less than a dollar a piece when you buy a few at a time. If you don't use those, um, those type of air stones, uh, the bubbling is extremely loud. These ceramic ones uh, make the bubbles very, very small and almost never clog. And my fish room for the most part is, is actually pretty quiet uh, because of it. Uh, the next thing that you're going to need um, is a bulkhead. Uh, again, I've always said before, you want to drill your tank so that you can do an automatic drip system. It's just a whole lot easier that way in the end, and I think you're gonna have much healthier fish because if you're anything like me, uh, water changes are something very, very easy uh, to put off. And so uh, every one of my tanks are drilled with the exact same bulkhead. Let's walk around here to the back so we can actually take a look at one of them. Thank you. 
And so as you can see up here, these are one of the bulkheads that I use. These bulkheads that I buy, um, I think they're about $6 a piece. And of course you've got all the different attachments and stuff and the PVC pipe for the drains. And so, you know, per tank for all of, you know, the, 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 the bulkhead again is about $7 and the rest of the pieces that are to it are probably about two or three dollars uh, a piece. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna need are lids. Now you can buy the glass lids, but that obviously can get very, very expensive. So I like to DIY all my lids. Um, I'll leave a link up at the top so you guys can see um, where I get this stuff from. This is a polycarbonate. Um, you can see this one is absolutely filthy. And so I cut this down, then I use these uh, command hooks um, to use them as a handle to lift these things. And when I buy this stuff in a sheet, it makes each one of these come out to be about $5 a piece. And so that's, to me, that's the most cost effective way of doing that and actually having uh, a good top, one that'll actually seal pretty well and keep the uh, evaporation down to a, a minimum. All right, so the next thing is uh, the lighting that, that I use. Now, I have LED lighting on every single one of my tanks. So we'll kind of come over here and take a look. Um, what I use, uh, these are Aquanite. Uh, this is one of the few tanks that I actually have uh, two of these guys on here. Uh, these are ones that I buy off of eBay. Uh, they're uh, 36 inch. So what that allows me to do is on these, uh, these 10 gallon tanks here is I can just have one of them up here and that one will do three tanks. And that uh, Aquanine is about $25 for one of the, the 36 inch ones. And again, that's an LED, so it uses a whole lot less electricity. And they do get hot, but they don't produce as much heat as some of the you know, regular uh, lights that people would use on their fish tanks. Uh, next thing uh, is a shelving. And so let's talk about the shelving that I use here. Um, right here where all these 10 gallon tanks are and these 40s are at, these um, these shelving, um, they're they're a six foot long shelving, and it'll hold eighteen. It'll hold eighteen tens on it. Uh, this shelving is about one hundred eighty dollars. I didn't buy this for the fish tanks. I used to actually uh, breed chameleons, and that's the original reason I had this. Uh, so these things were actually rusted to death. I had to scrub them all down, sand them, and repaint them um, so that they ended up working for this. And they've t they've turned out very very well. Um, they're they're just almost the right size, and you can see they'll hold uh, six forty gallons. And again, that's a hundred and eighty dollars for th th those types of stands or you can go with some of the stands that you build yourself uh, these 20 gallon longs I have this one holds four of them and again these are all ones that I've done myself um, out of two by fours um, same over here these 40 these 340 gallons are on ones that I've built on average these probably cost about 25 to 30 dollars a piece uh, again two by fours are about three dollars a piece plus the paint and uh, you know whatever your time is worth to put them to together um, I like to you I like to build my stands is because when I build my stands I can create them the exact size that I want them to and I don't have to have any excess space for instance you know with these with these 10 gallon ones you have you have this much excess space and when you're trying to get as many fish tanks and in a, in a room as you possibly can it's better to build the stands um, as small as you possibly can but still keeping in mind the ability to to raise the tops now these aren't the these aren't the greatest distance here because this runs into th this piece of wood um, that's over here and so you got to keep a lot of those things in mind um, so that is uh, the stands and the different choices of stands Next thing, uh, you got to deal with the substrate. Now, on my angelfish breeding tanks, I don't use any substrate in those, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, but the let's talk about the most cost-effective way to do that, and that would be uh, pool filter sand. As you can see in this tank right here, this is all pool filter sand. Um, the kind I get is from Home Depot. I'll link that above also. Uh, it's $8 for a 50-pound bag. 
and it comes out very, very clean. I barely even have to wash it, and it looks really good. And then there's also substrate, you know, that you can go to some of these gravel yards that sell all types of gravel. Um, the price of it comes up to, out to be about the exact same as the pool filter sand, uh, but the pool filter sand is just a lot more easily accessible. All right, so we, we, we've got our sponge filters, we've got, we've got the air line that goes to them, and now we need to talk about the pumps. Okay, so currently right now I use these Jimco pumps. These are a higher end pump because they're, they're more of a quiet pump, but they're also known to last for an extremely long time. I have two of these. Uh, these are LPH uh, 60s. Um, when I bought them, they're uh, $250 a piece. And uh, you figure one of these will run uh, about 50 uh, 10 gallon tanks, whether or not I'm running sponge filters or matten filters. Um, so you figure that, um, you, again, that's about $5 a tank just to have a pump uh, that, that pumps them. Uh, these are real low uh, wattage, so it, they don't you suck up a lot of electricity. That's another reason I really like them. And those will save you a lot more money than some of the, the louder pumps that you can buy uh, that are cheaper. And then uh, to go with that, um, you're gonna have to build the, uh, the air system that goes around. And as you can see, I have a, a simple uh, PVC one that goes all the way around. So I've got about $30 in PVC. And then you're gonna have to buy the uh, connections uh, that are on here that the hoses plug into. Uh, these connections that I use are a couple of dollars a piece. Again, these are ones that I use off of uh, uh, Jimco. I've got one that goes down to each tank. All right, next let's talk about uh, food. I use a variety of types of foods. In fact, whenever I take it, I'll mix up uh, multiple types of flake foods, multiple types of pellets, and I'll put them all in one big thing. And so I figure I spend about $25 a month. So food itself is not too excessive. Uh, occasionally I'll go out and I'll buy uh, frozen food and that'll you know get it up a little bit more. So let's say uh, $30 a month is what it takes to actually feed my fish room. Uh, so at 80 plus tanks, it doesn't come down to more than a couple of dollars, uh, or it comes down to less than a dollar uh, per tank. Okay, now let's talk about let's talk about water and water usage. Now I have a uh, 325 gallon tote that I run my uh, water out of, out of my, that I do my water changes out of. Now that's not something you necessarily need. I think I paid about $150 uh, for that. It's one of the ones I bought off of Craigslist. Uh, you just need to make sure if you buy one of those, it's only been used uh, uh, for things that are uh, that have been kept clean. You know, no oils and gases. Um, Preferably something that was, you know, used for a water or a food, uh, uh, food grade uh, products. And now you might ask the question, well, how much water do you actually go through, Jason? What does water cost you a month? And so let's figure this. Let's say I do 50% water change every two weeks. And my cost for water is $3.27 per thousand gallons. So that that's actually about two cents per tank per month. So water comes out to be very, very little when, it, when you figure out the cost to run a fish room. All right, now let's talk about electricity. How much electricity um, do I use? So we figure uh, the electricity that, that I pay is about seven cents a kilowatt hour, which is, from what I've heard, is pretty cheap. A lot of people will pay a lot more than that. And so the uh, air conditioner unit that I use, let's look at that. And so th that's another decision that you'll have to make is how are you going to heat and cool your room? And so uh, this is an air conditioner slash heater that I actually use. Uh, this one was about $300, it's 12,000 uh, 12, BTU. Now to run this thing, um, you know, different, it runs different amounts um, depending on what time of year is, but the heaviest usage uh, cost me about $57 uh, a month to run this. And then, um, the, again, the pump that, that I have up here, these LPH, these guys only cost me about um, eight cents per tank uh, per month based upon the electricity that they actually consume. 
All right, there you go. There is some of the cost involved in setting up a fish room. Again, I've tried to break this down per, per tank so you guys can kind of get an idea whether you're doing one tank or you want to do 100 tanks. Uh, you can kind of figure out. Again, when you go buy a $10 tank, from Petco, that tank isn't gonna cost you just $10. You're gonna put at least another $20 into it. So now that $10 tank is now $30 before you've actually got any type of livestock in it. So if you guys got any questions or comments, be sure and leave it down below. Um, be sure to be on the lookout for uh, the second video that we'll be putting out about fish rooms. So thanks again, guys, and God bless.